For what purpose does the gentleman from Florida seek recognition? Madam Speaker, I move that the House suspend the rules and pass the bill H.R. 1688. The clerk will report the title of the bill. H.R. 1688, a bill to amend the Indian Child Protection and Family Violence Prevention Act. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Soto, and the gentleman from Arkansas, Mr. Westerman, each will control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Florida. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days in which to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous material on the measure under consideration. That objection so ordered. Madam Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. Thank you, Madam Speaker. H.R. 1688, introduced by Representative Ruben Gallego of Arizona, our outgoing subcommittee chairman, and we appreciate your leadership on that, amends and reauthorizes several programs within the Indian Child Protection and Family Violence Prevention Act in order to improve the prevention, investigation, treatment, and prosecution of family violence, child abuse, and child neglect involving Native American children and families. There is an enormous need for the family violence prevention and treatment resources in tribal communities. Native children experience child abuse and neglect at an elevated rate, which leads many to require special education services to be more likely to be involved in the juvenile and criminal justice systems and to have long-term mental health needs. Passage of H.R. 1688 will create technical assistance programs in the Bureau of Indian Affairs, allow for urban Indian organizations to partner with tribal governments and ensure culturally competent care. I want to thank Representative Gallego for introducing and championing this vitally important legislation and urge my colleagues to support H.R. 1688 and I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman from Arkansas. Madam Speaker, I yield myself as much time as I may consume. The gentleman's recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. H.R. 1688 amends the Indian Child Protection and Family Violence Prevention Act to authorize three programs administered by the Department of Health and Human Services and the Department of the Interior that are intended to prevent cases within Indian communities where child abuse, neglect, family violence, and trauma may occur, and to provide treatment for victims of Indian child sexual abuse. The authorization for appropriations for the three programs expired in 1997. The bill also makes several technical changes to the underlying statute requiring agencies to report on grant awards. Advocates cite the Indian Child Protection and Family Violence Prevention Act as the only federal dedicated child abuse prevention and victim treatment funding for tribal governments, but Congress has only appropriated approximately $5 million for this program. I appreciate the sponsor bringing attention to this important issue as abuse, neglect, and violence have no place in any community. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves, gentleman from Florida. Madam Speaker, I yield five minutes to the gentleman from Arizona, Mr. Gallego. The gentleman's recognized for five minutes. Madam Speaker, I rise today in support of my bill, H.R. 1688, the Native American Child Protection Act. I first want to thank my friend and Dean of the House, Congressman Don Young, for working with me on this bill to ensure Native American and Alaska Native tribes have the resources they need to keep Native children safe from abuse and neglect. Last week, I joined my colleagues in recognizing National Day of Awareness for Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls. When I was chairman of the subcommittee for Indigenous Peoples last Congress, I held the first ever House Committee hearing on MMIW, which paved the way for the passage of critical bills like Not Invisible Act and Savannah's Act. At the hearing, we learned that in addition to experiencing incredibly high murder rates, one in three Native women experience domestic violence in their lives. That statistic is even more horrifying when we recognize that in 49 to 70 percent of cases, men who abuse their partners also abuse their children. Despite this fact, tribes have never received the resources they need to, to address child abuse and neglect in their communities. My bill changes that. My bill will improve the prevention, treatment, investigation, and prosecution of child abuse and neglect in Indian country by ensuring tribes have the resources they need to take care of Native children in culturally competent ways. H.R. 
It does so by modernizing and reauthorizing three programs originally passed as part of the Indian Child Protection and Family Violence Prevention Act. The Indian Child Protection and Family Prevention Act became law in 1990 after being authored by late Arizona Senator John McCain in response to widespread reports that Native children were being physically and sexually abused in BIA-run boarding schools in the 1980s. The original purpose of the law was to identify the scope of the underreported child abuse in Indian country, fill gaps in tribal child welfare services, improve coordination between child welfare and domestic violence programs, and to provide funds for treatment in Indian country. But the horrible truth is that the grants, program was created, the grants created by this law in 1990 were never funded, never enacted, and were allowed to expire in 1997. My bill revives the, the three grant programs from the original act that are still sorely needed in Indian country because the problems identified by Congress in 1990 still exist today. Specifically, my bill does one, provides tribes with more funding for culturally competent child abuse treatment. Two, allows tribes to choose to partner with urban Indian organizations or tribal consortiums to identify and treat victims of abuse. Three, creates a National Child Resource and Family Service Center to provide technical assistance and support to tribes in maintaining child warfare programs. Four, authorizes enough funds for every tribe to hire at least one child welfare case manager to help investigate and prosecute instances of abuse. And five, authorizes the only tribal specific grant program aimed at preventing child abuse in Indian country. A core part of the federal government's trust responsibility is protecting the most vulnerable members of indigenous communities, native children. Right now, we are failing in that responsibility. Passing this bill today allows us to take an important step forward in protecting Native children and upholding our trust responsibility to tribes. I am proud of the strong bipartisan support this legislation received in the National Resources Committee last year when it passed and when it passed by a voice vote in the House. I urge all my colleagues in the House to once again join me in supporting this important piece of legislation. Thank you, and I yield back. Gentleman from Arkansas. Madam Speaker, I yield as much time as he may consume. Uh, to a true expert on tribal issues, the gentleman from Alaska, the Dean of the House, Mr. Young. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Ch uh, Madam Chair, and thank you for the compliment. I've been called a lot of things on this floor, but including Dean, but thank you. Mr. Chairman, I rise in strong support of this legislation. I like to thank my friend, Representative Gallego. Uh, this is a good bill. It, it improves a, a bill which I passed uh, 30 years ago. And it's long due over to make sure that it's running right. Um, we, you know, as has been said, established a new National Indian Resource, Resource Service Center, uh, which was created over, 90, uh, 19, over 30 years ago. Uh, we're reauthorizing these programs, making sure they work. And it's badly needed because of actions across the country of indigenous people. Uh, we hope the victims will have better service than they have in the past. And uh, I congratulate the author of the legislation, me being sponsor of the legislation also. This is a good bill, and I urge the passage of this bill and all my colleagues to understand, let's do the job we were told to do when we became trustees of the, of the people, of the indigenous people of this great nation of ours. Again, I thank the chairman and the uh, author of the legislation and the ranking member for all their work they've done, and with that, I yield back. Gentleman yields back, gentleman from Florida. Madam Speaker, I have no further requests for time and would inquire whether my colleague has any remaining Gentlemen speakers from on their Arkansas. side. Gentlemen from Arkansas. Madam Speaker, I'm prepared to close. Gentlemen's recognized. Uh, Madam Speaker, again, I urge support of this bill and I yield back the balance of my time. Gentlemen from Florida. Madam Speaker, we had extensive hearings on these issues in Natural Resources and the Indigenous People Subcommittee, and it became clear we needed resources and technical assistance to protect Native American children and families uh, additional uh, to what they're getting now. I, I thank the, our outgoing chair, Mr. Gallego, for his leadership on this, the dean of the house, uh, Representative Don Young, uh, for his amazing leadership working together, former member Cook, who participated in these meetings extensively, uh, as well as now Secretary Deb Holland, one of the first Native American women to serve in the Congress, and I thank you, Ranking Member Westerman, for helping us get this done in a bipartisan fashion. And with that, I urge my colleagues to support the legislation, and I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass the bill 1688? Those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. 
In the opinion of the chair, the two-thirds being in the affirmative, the rules are suspended, the bill is passed, and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table.